everybody. Welcome back to POW Science Experiments. My name is Mr. Miles. I'm going to be your POW Science Scientist today. So today's going to be a little bit of a departure from what we usually do. And the reason is, is that I don't know how all of you folks feel, but I'm getting very, very sick of staying cooped up inside. So instead of staying locked in here in the basement, uh, I'm going to take you outside and I'm going to show you some of the cool things that I have seen on some of my nature walks in my neighborhood. So if you are not already taking nature walks with your family, you totally should be because it's a really, really good way to get out of the house for a little while. And if you know what to look for, it can actually be just as educational as spending some time doing some science. So I'm going to get my act together and take you outside and I'll see you there. All right, we are outside. I am walking, the birds are chirping. So the first thing I like to pay attention to whenever I go on any sort of nature walk is I like to listen to the different sounds that the birds make. So birds tend to have fairly unique calls. They don't tend to make a lot of different types of noises per individual species. So you can sometimes count the number of types of birds that are floating around if you try to count the different numbers of sounds. So that's one thing I like to do that can be an interesting activity to try on your next nature walk. Now don't ask me what any of the bird species are because I don't know, but I at least can count the sounds. So our next specimen is a little bit hard to see. It's that tan blob kind of right there in the middle. So what that is, is that's called an utheca. So an utheca is a praying mantis egg case. So praying mantises are most active in the late summer and fall because they're predators and they hunt other insects. So they have to wait until later in the season when there's lots of insects around. And then they tend to lay their eggs in the winter and the eggs hang out for the winter, and then once it gets to be warm weather again, the egg case can feel the temperature change, and the eggs start developing, and then they hatch. So about 200 praying mantises are going to come out of this thing, and there's a couple of them floating around here in this little spot. So these could be something interesting to try to look for when you go out on a nature walk. If you find one, you might find another one close by, because they tend to lay more than one egg case in their lifetime. So our next object is actually something I can actually pick up and show you, which is kind of cool. So this is a gall. So a gall is kind of similar to the mantis egg case we just saw, but there's a couple of big differences. So difference number one is that while both a gall and a egg case have insect eggs inside them, the difference with a gall is that a gall is made by a plant's immune system in response to an insect laying eggs inside it whereas an egg case is made by the insect itself. So this is an old one that's already emerged. And so what would have happened here is the insect would have laid its eggs inside of the tree. In this case, it would have been an oak tree. And the tree makes this round gall in response as sort of an immune response. And the insects grow up inside and then eventually they hatch. And then that's sort of this little hole here. So if you see one of these and they're attached to a tree, know that there are actually live insects growing up inside of it. If you find them out here on the ground where they're kind of hollow and dry, then that means the insect is long gone. And you can always look for the hole too. So the thing about the mantis egg case and the gall is that you'll find them, but you have to look a little bit harder for them. So the last thing I want to show you is something that is all over the place and very, very easy to find, but a lot of people don't look closely at them. And they're a lot cooler looking than people give them credit for, and I think they deserve more attention. So the last thing I want you to take a look at are some fiddleheads. So a fiddlehead is just a fancy name for a baby fern. It can be of any species. I believe that these are going to be New York ferns, and I'm going to throw up some pictures of these and some other ones that I believe are going to be cinnamon ferns, though don't quote me on the species. And the reason they're called fiddleheads is because they kind of look like the top of a violin. And so they're baby ferns, and eventually these are gonna grow into big ferns. So ferns start off all curled up, and then eventually they spread out. And the reason that I like to look for these on nature walks is because there's something you're definitely going to find a lot of at this time of year. Later on in the summer, the ferns are going to be big and fully grown, so they're not gonna look like this anymore. And I honestly just think they're really, really cool and beautiful. I actually think that fiddleheads look even cooler than the real grown-up ferns. So it's something I like to take advantage of at this time of year. So that's all I wanted to show you on this particular walk. I could have shown you stuff all day, but the best way for you to really see all that stuff is to go out there and see it yourself. So next time you go on a nature walk, don't just walk around and look at stuff. Really get down low, look closely at things, and maybe you'll see something that surprises you. And don't forget to have a good rest of your day and tune in next week. <laughs>